Welcome to Audible Sportscast, your home for all things sports. Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a fun, fun first week one. I'm so excited that football's back. I don't know, I don't about- know if it'd be fun. I would say it was very interesting, but interesting can be fun. I, I thought it was fun. Anytime I get to sit an entire Sunday just looking at multiple TV screens, I call that a fun day. Is that good for my eyes? Definitely not. But who, who cares, you know? Live That's while you, you can. You got to get the blue blocker. That is actually a good idea. If anyone wants to maybe uh, get some for me, I will No, we're the ones accept- who are supposed to give people free stuff, sir. Ah, uh, well, sometimes a donation or two isn't. But that's hey, that's that's true. besides that's besides the point. Welcome back, Audible Sportscast. We are, we're let's just go right into it. Week one has ended, full slate of games. You know, those first few weeks, there's no bye week, so there's every single team playing, which means we got a lot to talk about. But before we get straight into last week's games. Let's start with a little segment we're going to try here where we talk about we talk about a little bit of fantasy football. I feel like that's something we've lacked. So let's every week we're going to give our must starts and must sits. Only one player of both category for now. Not necessarily a player. That is true. I mean if you if you want your must start to be or must sit a defense then that's fine. I I personally I don't change my defense as much unless I have a horrible defense and I'm in the waiver wire every week trying to find one but don't be like me go for that early defense but that's hey fantasy drafts are already over now's not the time for fantasy advice but or at least for drafting but let's give some fantasy advice for week two heading into the games Brett who's a okay I have two must starts on defense I couldn't choose you have two defensive must starts must starts Okay, what two defenses are the Bengals and the Rams? The Bengals. The Rams and are the at Rams. the Rams face the Falcons, and the Bengals face the Cowboys. I mean, the Bengals is almost an obvious choice, you know. Without Dak, we'll talk about Dak a little bit later, and yes, but the Falcons are are still the Falcons, and the quarterback that... situation is still, yeah. That, I, I will say sad. that Falcons team did a lot better for their against the Saints Correct. than I expected. But at the same time, we have a Rams team that was completely, I would say, killed in that second half. And they're looking for a bounce back game. This could be a potential good bounce back game for them. And that is kind of related to my must sit for the week because because you have that. I feel like this Rams defense will have a good game. And I feel like someone who must be a must sit is Cordell Patterson. While, you know, running backs are. Hold. Okay, go ahead. Running backs are very rare. So if you have a running back like Cordell Patterson who you just don't have a replacement for, obviously keep him in. I'm going to debate with you on this at the end here. Okay, well, say your two running backs are J.K. Dobbins and Cordell Patterson. That you're going in now. Just two examples. I would say go for Dobbins right now. He's looking like he's going to play this week. And I mean, I just don't. See, yes, it's going to be Bobby Wagner versus Cordell Patterson coming out of the backfield for passes. But I just feel like this is a, a game where the Falcons might try to a- attack that passing defense. They saw what the Bills did. I'm not comparing Mariota to Josh Allen in any way. <laughs> but, but yeah, I agree. I but feel like they're going to come is, out trying to attack the pass. They're going to get down on, early. Who's going to be on offense the most? I mean... That's my theory on the Falcons. That is true. That's why I think he'll get his yards. But that's what we're here to debate. You know? Exactly. That's opinions. But I, I just compare what he... You know, he had a pretty good game week one. I just think it will be down just a level. Watch, I could be completely wrong, but that's just what I think, you know. So, <laughs> okay, well, my must start is Cortland Sutton. I feel like a lot of people 
are looking and trying to still figure out which of the two receivers are going to be Russell Wilson's. And I don't think his confidence is very high. Sutton's or Judy's? Sutton's. I, I feel I, I definitely after that game, there's I feel like a couple bad plays there at the end by him, but I think he will have a much improved game that Texans set. I when I don't want to compare week one Texans, but Michael Pittman's a very, in some ways, comparable player to Cortland Sutton. And I feel like the rookie um, Texans drafted Stingley will be more on Jerry Judy. While they might attack that more, I feel like Cortland Sutton will have a very good game. I'm still weary on Jerry Judy. We'll see if they revamp Russell. We'll see if Russell Wilson can become back to Russell Wilson Russell did Wilson. not look bad week one whatsoever. I he looked very good. No, it's just they tried to make him play like a different that I, type I of quarterback. I definitely he agree with that. He looked more like Aaron Rodgers out there with kind of the way they were pre playing and everything. But who knows? Maybe that'll be better for him. It, week one with a new team, a new head coach. I have to take. Almost every single week one with a grain of salt, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. You're going to be shocked by my my week one must sit. Lay it on me. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Honestly, that's not... That, that, that's he has terrible luck against the Saints In regular defense. season, keep in mind. Yes. He's yet to beat them in the regular season. Now, I mean, if I were to say who's going to win the game, I still think it's probably the Bucks. but he just doesn't have great games against the Saints in the regular season. And the lads, that this is going on two years now, you know? And not, not, two seasons. not to mention that a lot of the key offensive pieces are already pretty banged up. I mean, Donovan Smith, the left now, tackle, if I were three to give of the receivers the, are... Just look at the Tampa Bay Bucks injury... Lit, um, yes, it's, and if now if I were to if now if he's your main quarterback, my my I guess if you could pick up Baker Mayfield or a Mitch Trubisky, that's who I would pick up. Okay, that's maybe a little bit out there for the Mitch. Depend, no, depending on how deep your league is and how many, you know that's what I mean? Because it's hard if you can really pick up a. To give, if you can pick up a Matt Ryan, sure, go do that. Ex- exactly. I that's. I mean, I've seen a lot of leagues. Carson Wentz is available. I mean, depending on how deep, but it depends how deep. You know, you could be in a two quarterback league with twenty people. I hope. I but hope I also you're not know in Baker's one of those, playing but. the Giants, and you know how much I love TB12. But I just know. I just. I'm basing it on odds. That's true. And my God, I'm. I would not be big on TB12. This week, at least, I I, I mean, I I can almost guarantee you, ninety percent of the world will still start. Probably, I mean, he's kind of one of those guys. Depending on who, like, I mean, it's hard to bench Tom Brady unless, unless you have made, like you, Aaron Rodgers or someone else on your bench. Exactly, two. And there are a lot of people who do st- have two top quarterbacks. And hey, good for you. This is a good week. Yeah, to, but then the rest of their roster is garbage. Probably it, de- <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it de- like I said earlier, it depends what kind of fantasy league you're in. But I agree with the Tom Brady. I'm gonna talk about. I'll talk about Brady and the Bucks a little bit later. I'm hinting a lot of stuff here early, but let's move on. I had talked about our fantasies for next week, week two. Obviously, this is gonna come out a little later, so we're not gonna talk about the Chargers Chiefs game because it'll be done by the time this even comes out. So let's go. But I actually have that as my game of the week. Well. Hopefully it looked like a game of the week by the time this comes out, or you're going to look dumb. But we'll talk about the game of the weeks here in a second. No, as a, as a game, as a must-watch game. I'm yeah, sorry. I mean, Let me rephrase And it that. will be, I mean. It should be exciting. I am interested, too, to see how the new Thursday night football on Amazon Prime will go. Let's hope my Wi-Fi can keep up with it, because we talked about a couple things for next week. Let's move back to talk about a little bit what happened last week. Um, every, just like we're going to want to give you fantasy stuff every week, we're going to give you our rookies of the week. You know, rookies, I feel like a lot of times don't get enough credit because they're the new guys in town. So 
We'll give every week our rookies of the week. Brett, you, we talked a little bit earlier. You said you had two defensive rookies. You're, you're big on defense this week for everything, it sounds like. No, I've actually um, – I, I flip-flop, but one is uh, – my first one is an offensive lineman for the Vikings, Ed Ingram. Okay, okay. He had a stellar game. I watched – I didn't get to see the game, but I, I watched uh, a 20 minute highlights of it, and then I, I did some research on him because he had a st- here, based on you know pro football focus, he is the second rate, highest rated rookie from last week. That deserves credit. Now, my defense, my other one is. No, I'm not. Okay. You could call me biased because we know that I'm a Bears fan, but it's Dominique Robinson. Because, and he also, I didn't know this at the time, had the highest grade for pro football focus, and he had a stud game. For pass rushing rookies or, like, highest, highest uh, grade? For overall rookies in general. Yeah, I mean, he didn't – he wasn't – he played really good, you know, the – the highlight definitely of was he him. may okay if you're not if you're not familiar with the bears everyone he made the guy that he's there that I thought would be the starter over him um oh my good Gibson <laughs> look mediocre compared to him yeah he had a very good game especially for you know a mid mid late round rookie you, you know, you kind of need those diamonds in the rough if you're the Bears. And he showed out. I mean, it was a sloppy game if anyone watched the 49ers Super Bears Super wet, sloppy, slippery. Typical Soldier Field rain game. But I've heard nothing but great things about him. So uh, Yes, I agree. That defense is looking a lot better than what a lot of people said. I mean, to be fair, that team looked better than... Just everyone talk about them in general. They're supposed to be the worst team in the league. Get to be the 49ers team. But hey, week one, a lot can happen. But after you go yours, I'll give I'll give the everyone the pro football focused top five highest graded rookies. Okay. I gave you two. We'll see if any of yours pop up on there. Maybe. Probably one of them because the other one they don't like talking about this position that much. But one, um, this guy was the first overall pick. A lot of people questioned why he was the first overall pick. And week one, he showed out. He had a sack, he had an interception. Though they didn't win, I think he showed a lot of people, hey, I'm a good player for this league. That's Trayvon Walker for the Jaguars. And he just he did had, have a great game. He had a great game. And, you know, compliment him with Josh Allen on the, you know, at the other side. I think... They're, the Jaguars but are I doing think he really gets good. But I forgotten about because it's the Jags. Exactly. But I think the Jags, you know, they had a lot of just nothingness, kind of. And <laughs> well, I, they, they they're doing a, a good job. that didn't care exactly. last year. And they're doing a lot. They brought in a lot of free agents, whether you thought some were overpaid or not. And I think they had a pretty good draft. And They had the money, so overpaying is fine. So I think they're doing I, – I think the Jags are going to be a lot better than a lot of people think. I Somewhat. I think they're a contender for the division next year. I can see that. If, Tra- if Trevor Lawrence takes – if he can show some good steps this season, I, I would easily – I agree with you. Have them have a good draft next offseason, and I could see it. And spend some more money because they have it. Yes, I agree. But my other rookie is a man who had 14 points for a team that really needed it. It was a close game through and through. Whether you agree that the Browns should have even had a chance to kick this game-winning field goal by this rookie kicker because of penalties that should have been called, weren't called, he still kicked. He had a 58-yard 58 58 game-winning field goal as a rookie, had you know, accounted for 14 of the Browns' 24 points. I think Cade York, kicker for the Browns, was my second rookie of the week. 
it's you know in a week we're going to talk about this here in a little second but in a week where a lot of kickers struggled he didn't you know he's one of the few guys that actually was able to hit a game winner well on that note i got something at the after we get through the rookies about on one kicker thing that i thought was quite amazing well that's the end of my rookie so what do you got well here the top five highest grade rookies by pro football focus is actually dominique robinson then dylan parham not donald parham dylan he's on the raiders ed ingram then you got abraham lucas from seattle and then you got the malcolm rodriguez who did have a great game also for detroit nfc north representing in these rookies i love it yes now it is week my one. And my kicker slash non kicker of the week is Justin Reed. <laughs> yeah, you have to talk about Justin Reed. Uh, the same. Well, you know he was kicking them through the uprights on kickoffs. Yeah, he has. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the Chiefs' newly signed safety, who has had several experiences in the preseason. Several. For He's the last also couple played years. soccer his whole life. Yes before football and so harrison buck bucker couldn't play the entire game and they had him I think he hurt his ankle or yeah, hamstring he ended up coming remember. back later in the game and he's, he's not of course playing this week we'll see what they do with the kicker this week but i think they might roll with justin reed as kicker we'll i think see. he can i and you know what that you know how cool that would be to see a dual purpose guy like that it would be a pretty guy who plays cool. safety and kicks. Not you know for like I'm talking like they keep a kick. They don't even keep a kicker. I doubt they'll do that because he he's a good he's a very good emergency type position. I know because kickers hurt. The, you he could hurt his hamstring easily, and then he's more important at defense. Exactly. Than, but I just thought that was. I mean, yes, we've all seen. We can all look at Chad Ochocinco kicking one or two in the preseason here or there. Yes, I mean, Don but Sue's done it, but for him to get the not like this, yeah. I don't think anyone, any other skilled like non kicker or punter can has we've seen can kick like Justin Reed. No, I mean the touchbacks. He even while he did miss one, he had a successful point after attempt too, and those those aren't always easy. I mean, no. we saw it this week. Let's move into more talking about actual kickers. We saw a lot of kickers struggle just in general kicking. We saw... But oh, I think we are on the trend of why everyone's saying kicking's ruining the NFL is because they are so used to the studs that are now gone, retired. Yeah, I mean... You know? I think that's part of it. Potentially, and I think just while there's just so many more at like we saw Justin Reed he could easily if he spent his time being he could be a professional kicker in the league probably but instead he chose to play a more skilled well, position I wouldn't you don't get paid enough Exactly what I'm saying why why be a kicker in the NFL when you can go out play soccer if you're a skilled But I'm person? not going to lie to you though why aren't kickers paid more when if you look at some of these, okay, who scored the most points in Bears history? Robbie Gold. A kicker. For most teams, they're leading, unless you're... See, that's that's where, you know, but that's just how the world is, you know? Yeah, I just, I think a lot of people are tired of seeing mediocre kickers get these chances i wouldn't say mediocre some are really like brandon mcmahon is yeah, that's a really have good kicker. no we have no vinatieri anymore we have no justin tucker's still around yeah but i i don't put him in that class he just has a bigger leg but you know what i mean the guys like that are all gone all those the guys who just played forever and were lights out tucker is great don't get me wrong and i think he will get there if he plays a few more years i think he's already there well that's why we're here i while he maybe doesn't have the total points or whatever that vinatieri has he i mean he kicked last just last season he kicked a game-winning field goal that turned into 
you know, the record for longest field goal. Like, who else is going mean, to do yes. that? No, it's he has one of the best legs of all time. I agree with that. And it's not like he's out in Denver where he can, you know, they, the air's t- tight or wherever where they say you can kick it a lot farther. He's in Baltimore. Yep. But I, I, I've just seen a lot of people complaining about the kicking situation. And they, but oh, everybody complains about everything. That is true. First, every year, at first it's the kickoff rule. Now it's the kickers. Then it's the, you know, the way people tackle or this. It's uh, there's going to be complaints every year, and uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. It just is life. That is true. I mean, kicking has been around longer in the NFL than the forward pass. So. It's just, it's, I mean, we're going to see it every time. There's, I like kicking. I think kicking is a very big skill, but, you know. I, I think agree. Moving, and it's yeah. something that it does change the pace. It is maybe a little less physical, and you are going to see these teams lose because of a kicker, but, I mean. But the game's becoming less physical, so I don't see the issue. That That is, a, that is true. It is still a pretty physical game, but we are seeing it become a little less physical partially because they get rid of certain kicking things like the kickoffs are completely changed punting hasn't well, been touched that it's much. because of the older guys getting injured you know the stuff oh, with yeah, brain I, injuries i agree stuff. that it, stuff needs to be changed but i'm shocked that a helmet hasn't been designed to completely with the science and technology we have to just eradicate concussions well, not eradicate, but drastically, drastically reduce it. But who knows? I mean, yeah, we see these people. I don't know what the exact numbers are in concussions and how much they've grown. I mean, partially they probably have grown because more people are coming out to say they've gotten concussed. Like, how? imagine how much back in the, Like, Brett Favre said, um, came out and said he had like over 10,000 concussions over his you know entire playing career. Who knows if that's true? It's, I don't think it was that high. No, but, but knowing he how but, he played, uh, but I mean, hearing old Bears stories about how Erlacher had so many that he would quick get up and pretend like he was okay, or tell someone to help him up because he didn't want to get out of the game. And I respect that, but what's going to happen to him long term? Jim McMahon's another guy. Oh Just, yeah. But we're getting off subject here. But concussions are. A serious thing. They are. And I think in a game like football, even with some of the best technology, we're just never going to be able to get rid of them because of how the game is played. Well, people are bigger, faster, exactly. stronger. You can have a perfect you could have a perfect helmet, but if someone's coming at you at twenty miles per hour, full steam ahead, and your head no matter Jeez, twenty five with some of these guys that's now. That's true. And, All right, but we need to yeah, move let's on move to the on. next Ki- segment. Kicking, yeah, it's always going to be here. I don't think we'll ever get rid of it. Concussions, no bueno. But <laughs> moving on, you know, we talked about, you know, some of these kickers having some issues. There's some teams here that a lot of people have as Super Bowl to contenders that struggle too week one. The Packers, Rams, just two teams right off the bat that – looked horrible in their first weeks horrible on both sides of the ball that is you true you can't blame you can't blame just the rams and the packers offense that is true brett do you see how they played week both of these teams or either of them do you see are we overreacting um on the uh Okay, I'm going to just go into portions of it. On the Rams offensive line, no. I don't think we are. Or people aren't. Their offense, losing Whitworth was a dagger. Might have been old. But when you have a veteran like that who isn't there anymore, and then you spend all your money on other places, even though you went out and got Matt Stafford and all these receivers... If he doesn't have time, he's dead in the water. Exactly. And and that's kind of the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, well, to be fair. This isn't me being the pa- biased here. To be fair, too, the Packers were without two, I would call, all pro caliber linemen. But continue what you're saying. 
Uh, but to me, great quarterbacks make great receivers. I I mean, I one could say if you were to be – I'm from Wisconsin. We all know this. If you listen to the podcast, I am a Bears fan. But when you to look back, the only, I would say, superstar receiver Brett Favre ever had was Sterling Sharp. And his career was cut short. He had some good receivers – like Robert Brooks, Brooks, Antonio Freeman, but he made them good. You know? Yeah, I I mean, I agree. I mean, honestly, Jordy, and, and, and Aaron has made some receivers like Jordy Nelson good. James Jones probably would never, they, they were never the same players on other teams. Randall Cobb, same. But if he can't do it with these young guys, they're in big trouble. But at, and and at the same time, you're you're set, you just said it. I mean, two two they had two rookies that were had a lot of playing time. I mean, plus Sammy Watkins, who's a new new person to that. They but just need see, time the to thing blend. Is, Watkins is so up and down. He's always been up and down. But that's mostly He's one because of those of guys injuries. who could have been a, a five time Pro Bowler by now. But he's so inconsistent. I agree. I mean, partially that too. He was just in systems where he wasn't the number one weapon, so he kind of was in some ways downgraded because of that. But I just think, yes, the Packers looked abysmal, but I think they just need time. We talked about it. They but their defense looked abysmal too. That is true. I mean, Jair Alexander, a you know, a lot of people call a top three corner in the league couldn't cover Justin Jefferson, but I think that's going to be a problem for any corner in this league. I, I mean, yes, covering certain receivers, there is, to me, there is no, not even Jalen Ramsey, there is no shutdown corners anymore. Not completely. Like, there is no Revis Island, like there used to be players. You know, because the game has evolved, the game's a little different, you know, it's not as physical, like we, in a way, like you can't press as much. Yeah, I mean, you know, certain things. Because here, let's just look at it this way: Darrell Revis wasn't a big guy, but he also was able to hold guys like Calvin Johnson under under sixty yards. That and that was because of not just it was physicality; it was also different rules. I I mean yeah I agree I mean we'll I mean even in a more recent time Richard Sherman we will never he, like he could like Darrell Revis just sit on one side I mean, and yeah. you're good you knew that side was going to be good but with the way that certain teams are they they just move their guys around and a lot of these teams are not necessarily stacked at wide receiver but they know to give you know, like say Justin Jefferson, hey, take off two plays, we're going to run it a little bit or something like that. But see, like Jalen Ramsey struggles in the slot. He, you know, I mean, against the Bills, he that he struggled everywhere. Yeah, but I think sometimes with him, I think his ego gets the best of him. I think he is the most talented corner in the league still. I would agree. But I think he's one of those ego guys again. You know, where you don't ever hear Jair. Like guys like Jair Alexander, um, Lattimore, those guys yapping. You don't you don't hear no negative press about them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And with Ramsey, I mean, I think to be a great guy, corner sometimes or a great player, you have to have that. You have to believe in yourself a thousand percent. Oh yeah, not a hundred, a thousand. I, I believe the cor- the cornerback position is the hardest position in the world to play because. You're having to guard the best athletes on the field, I would say. Correct. Which makes them, in some ways, arguable more athletic because they have to guard the most athletic. Hence why they're starting to get paid huh? more and more again. And... It went away. It got lowered for a bit, but now it's back up. Not And not to mention, if you're the starting one-two corner on a team, depending on you know how good you they think you are... You're not taking you any plays off. You also got to be good in the run game. It, yeah, that too. You're not taking any plays off. They expect you to tackle, on, you know, at the line of scrimmage or whenever you get the chance to. 
Yeah. And, you know, you're going against guys who, you know, other than offensive linemen, but, you know, corner against offensive linemen in most situations is not a good matchup when talking about, you know, run game or something. Because I think people forget about that, that the one and two corners and the nickel corners in a lot of systems, they have to stop the run too. It's not just pass coverage. Yeah. And I think a, I think that gets forgotten a lot. I, I think subbing gets forgotten too on the offensive side. That, you know, they have to go against, like, say Justin Jefferson versus, or, you know, keep it with um, the game that happened Thursday, Stephon Diggs versus Jalen Ramsey. Yes, yep. Ram, Ramsey has to cover whoever's on his side the whole game. And then Stephon Diggs. He can take a play or two off. No one expects wide receivers to play 100% of the snaps. And that helps the receivers because... But corners do. Yes. Corners don't corners get Corners and safeties. It's like offensive linemen. You can have 99% of your your uh, uh, you know offensive snaps be zero sacks, zero pressures. But that one sack you let, you'll never forget. You'll never, you'll never hear the end of it. Unless you're Joe Thomas. He'll probably be the only one ever to do that. That there's, I mean, there's a couple other guys I feel like that we see in the league. But that's for another. Di- oh yeah, another day. Another day. Let's let's move on. Let's end it with our. Th- we both have three games that for week two that we think are the most needed to watch games. You mentioned you go for you go okay, ahead on okay. this one. Okay, all right. So I have three games that I feel like are must watches that you just you gotta watch these games. I think they're gonna be exciting, whether that's because of offense, whether that's because of defense, or I just think this is a much needed to watch matchup, whether there's you know, just the implications. First one up, the Buccaneers versus Saints. We alluded to it earlier. You know, Tom Brady doesn't play good regular season wise since he's been in Tampa against the Saints. And I think we saw the Saints struggle for three quarters, but they played really good in the fourth quarter against Atlanta. And I think with that momentum, with Tampa Bay kind of a long list of injuries, and not to mention they just played really good against Tampa. I'm going to call them Tampa Bay just because, you know, Tom Brady, Tampa Bay. Yep. I think the Saints at home can get a win here. And I have them winning this game. Okie dokie. I think it's just Saints are going to need to win games like this if they want to compete, and I think they can easily compete. They are a very, I think, loaded. I mean, depending on how you feel with Jameis Winston, even if Jameis Winston plays, I think, mid-level, that's a really talented roster. There's some questions on the offensive line, but that's fine because everything else I love. So I'm going to have the Saints win this at home. Second game. It's, a mon- it's one of the two Monday Night Football games this week. I don't know why they do it this week and no other week. But the Vikings and Eagles. I think that could be a prelude to what we... He stole one of mine, so that is that is one of mine as well. Well, then let's both talk about this one. So I have the Vikings winning it, but this is a game that people are saying is two teams that should are, may meet again in the playoffs. I agree, and these are two teams where, while, you know, maybe... Depending on how, you know, Kirk Cousins does this year, this could be a team. Both of these teams are, for the next couple of years, this is, they're on the start to their p- potential run. Correct. And I, I just love what both teams did this offseason, whether that was getting an entire new offensive scheme with the, with the, Vikings that we saw week one did really good. And with the Eagles just, you know, trading for A.J. Brown, having an amazing draft and just, you know, added to their already good depth. But unlike you, I have the Eagles winning this one at home. I just think this is going to be a fun game to watch. Yep. And I, I'm going to be interested to see how Justin Jefferson is used more in this game. I think... I don't want to say the Eagles secondary is better per se than the Packers, but he's, we'll see. We'll see. I think this is, I think both these teams just line up. And who's your last one? My last one, maybe should have done these in order because the Vikings and Eagles play on Monday, but I have the Dolphins and Ravens. Another one of those teams 
Really? Yes. I. That one's a shocker. I mean, these are two teams Call. where, like the Vikings and Eagles, a lot of people say they'll meet later in the line, and this could be a potential game where both of these teams could look back and be like, oh, this could have been one of those games if we played a little different, we could be in, say, the division lead or, like, a step higher depending on how wild card goes. I mean, yes, the Dolphins have the Bills, but I think this could be a potentially, while the Bills are really good, this could be potentially a year. The Dolphins could maybe sneak in something, you know. But with the Ravens, too, that's just, you know, between them and the Bengals, I I think, you know. I did think about that game, but I, and I actually, if you remember, I did say my other game. You did. You mentioned it earlier. Chargers, Chiefs. Yes. But before you get to that, I think the Dolphins win this game. I think they're, I, I think. I actually think that, too. While it is in Baltimore and my other two were homes, I think the Dolphins line up a lot better compared to the Ravens, but it's going to come down to how Tua plays. I'll, you know, everyone showing Tua's first pass was a, you know, that horrible first pass he had. I think Tua shows up this game. He's going to need to because that, but I'm still really big on this Baltimore defense. But if Tua balls out, which I think he could. Dolphins get the win. So since I mentioned, I agree, since I mentioned Chargers Chiefs earlier, because that's tonight, I believe that the uh, Chargers are going to win this game. You? Uh, I've been going back and forth all week on this game. Um, J.C. Jackson is playing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how Mike Williams plays. Mike Williams always, the last couple games, has played really well against KC. Without Keenan Allen, it'll be tough. And we still don't really know what this Chiefs team is going to do with these receivers. Yeah, we know Travis Kelsey is going to ball out. But they still have a plethora of receivers that we haven't really seen. I mean, we kind of know Juju, but... No, we know Juju. We know Scantling. But do we really? I mean... Well, I, I mean, he had Aaron Rodgers, and he, okay, he had one year. He, and then after that, he kind of tapered off. Hardman has never fully proven himself. Plus That's a true. rookie in Sky Moore. I think they have a bunch of young. I think Sky Moore is going to be the number two behind Juju by the end of the season. It could be, but then you have a couple guys where, you know, all, all, you know it's going to, I think even Mahomes said it. It's hard to it. say. But Each they always those... need lots of receivers there, so. I agree. It'll be interesting to see how this team plays without Tyreek. I think they're going to be completely fine, and I think they're going to get a win here at home against the char- against the Chargers. Well, we are the opposite on that one. And my final game, and it's not because I'm biased, it's the Bears and the Packers, because I think this game dictates if the Bears win this game, and I'm not going to say the Bears are going to win the division by winning this game, but they put the Packers in a bad, bad situation. That is true. If the if the Packers lose to the Bears at home, then you don't remember way Aaron Rodgers owns the Bears. That is, he does, but the 49ers own the Packers, and the Bears the just 49ers beat the 49ers. Defense is better. That. Than the Packers defense. You can't. It's hard to. You can't compare. I mean, it is supposed. If, it is supposed to rain this Sunday night. If the Packers' offensive line is out again, which I'm hearing it's questionable, the Bears do have a very good pass rush. Yes, I mean, I do worry a little bit about our secondary. secondary. Yes, it is improved, but we saw a lot of it's, times Trey Lance it's Vildor, miss. I worry about. Yes. But, we saw several times Trey Lance just miss some opportunities on some passes. Aaron yes. Rodgers isn't going to do that. He's going to take advantage of those. That worries me, which is why I feel like you know it's going to be same old Packers win. But you never know. I'm excited to see what Trey Lance will do. I'm upset or not with Trey you Lance. For that, Oh my God, Justin Fields. That's the second week I've done that with Justin Fields. I'm upset with you for that Packers win, but that's okay. It's a long season. They'll get to play again. Well, you again. also can't just pick your favorite team all exactly. the time. So. If you do that, then you're going to look dumb. You're going to lose money if you're going to bet it. And you just just don't do it. Depending on what your team I mean, unless your team is like. But I'm I'm very excited for this week. It's oh, going to yeah. be really it's exciting. Just like last week, there's a lot of fun matchups. I'd say 
even more fun matchups this week. Well, we're going to have way more to talk about next week. I oh, think. yeah. I agree. I mean, we're going to have to talk about this Chargers-Chiefs game to start it off next week. But that's all we got for you today. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification on YouTube. And just have fun. Happy football. Make, don't forget, while there is NFL, there is also college football. A lot of good matchups this week. Keep an eye on those. Oh, we're not getting involved in college we're football We're not, yet. but you, you got to say it's there. You got to say it's I there. I know. But have a good one, everybody. Later. Thanks for listening to Audible Sportscast, your home for all things sports.